Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Um, this is another OTB thinker moment. Uh, got talking about blast gates and dust collection, and I talked about a vacuum manifold recently. And I was showing you a new idea about how uh, I did the blast gates on them on the manifold so that they could be cleaned out rather than building up with dust. What I'm talking about is if you take a look at a standard blast gate that you get, commercial one, the inexpensive ones. <coughs> It's a dead end at this end of the slot. So when you open and shut this, this slot, this piece is going into a dead end area at the back. And this fills up with sawdust, fine dust, over time and gets packed in there every time you open and close. Eventually, the, th the gate will not close. It'll stay partially open and that's when you have a problem. So that's a problem with some of the gates that you buy commercially. Now, I've seen some of them like this well, the way they solve the problem is they just left it open on the end. So when you open the gate, air can suck in there. And when you close it, all the sawdust is pushed out so it never builds up. But you do have a vacuum leak. On the 4-inch type dust collectors, that little bit isn't quite as critical. But still, why have any loss if you don't have to? Um, on, the on the shop vac systems... That kind of air leak at the blast gate would actually be noticeable on the amount of draw you get on your shop vac. So you're not going to be drawing near as efficient in getting that debris away from the machine or wherever you're trying to collect it from going through that blast gate if it has a leak right at the blast gate. So in order to cure that, but yet still give you the capability of cleaning it out rather than having to build up with dust in that slot, uh, I've given it some thought like an outside-the-box thinker that I am, I finally came up with what I would think is a good solution when you're designing your blast gates. So what I did is I made one that is in the size for a shop vac, but you can scale this up to a four-inch dust collector type system also. But it has its own clean-out, so this is actually self-cleaning. It's a normal blast gate, has a blast gate door right here. You open and shut to work it. It's dead end on three sides. So this is in a dead-end grooved area, and you would think you'd have the same problem with dust building up with this. But on this one, what I've actually done is I've taken on the back piece, and instead of gluing the piece in here and sealing the back end of this where the, tail, where the um, gate is, I actually took and I put a blast gate back here that opens and shuts. When you take the one pin out, it pivots on the other pin, so this pushes out of the way. So when you push the blast gate in a little further, it actually pushes away in the slot, comes out. And that means that all that dust and dirt build up in here will now get pushed out. Then you pull the gate back, make sure you have your vac on, and if you pull this back just a little ways, and then that'll draw all that debris out of the way so that then you can close the gate again Close the gate, put your pin back in it, and now you're back to working. So it's easy to clean, never clogs up, and if it does, it only takes a second to clean it out. So it makes it quick and easy, and yet you still get a good seal around this whole uh, unit. So I'm going to take this apart. I just made it from three-quarter inch plywood and a piece of uh, quarter inch hardboard here. This is just two inch PVC pipe and I'll talk about how I made those in a second. So there's basically four major pieces to this when you get done. Let's take it apart and let's take a look at it. So you can see how easy it is to actually make. So I'm gonna take the screws out. Normally I have four in there, but I, do, I actually only had two at the moment for obvious reasons. So now, whoop, let's take these pins out and take the rear gate off and all it is is it's cut on one corner so that it can actually pivot on the one pin but otherwise it's just a straight piece of uh, hardboard also and then you have your two halves and your gate itself the gate has a little dowel on here which helps the stop to go and open and shut and gives it a place to stop inside you have a groove if you look at the upper piece first it's just basically this is five by five. You can make it any size that you like. And again, I'm using standard PVC pipe. So when I take my piece of uh, melamine or whatever you use, and I drill the hole just the right size for PVC pipe to set in there. 
then before I put the piece in on here, I heat this up with a um, with my heat gun. And when I get it good and pliable, then I just take a straight piece of pipe and I shove it down in there. And I now have it so that it will fit two inch PVC. So if I'm using two inch PVC in the shop for the duct work, uh, I can hook these right up to it. Once I get that thing swelled out and cut to the length, then I set it down, I set that in there, and then I hot glued it in place. And that's more than enough to hold this thing, and it holds very well. I haven't had one come apart. I've done this this way for a long time over the years. Once you've glued it together, you cut a quarter inch slot right down the middle of this. And that slot there is so that this pin on your gate rides in that slot and then on the two ends I put a little piece of wood in there hardboard and uh, hardwood and glued it back in there so that you don't get vacuum leaking through the end of the slot and it gives me a stop for my blast gate when opening and shutting it so you want to set those to wherever you're comfortable with how far you want this thing to come back to open because it's best if it does open all the way so anyway I just put a piece of board in there just to seal it off. The lower piece is a little different. What I do with this one is you have the holes, four holes here to drill to hold the two pieces together. And that's how I use four screws to hold it together so I can take it apart if I need to. On the bottom side, I actually cut a quarter inch deep, which is the thickness of my gate. I cut a dado down through the center here over where this hole is. And then that way my gate slides in here and it's guided by the slot. On the back side where the relief gate is, the clean out, I go across here and that's where this piece then sets down in here with the pin holes lining up so that that lines it up right here so that when the gate closes, it can close and everything is sealed and you don't get any vacuum leak from the unit when it's put together. And that's how it basically works. So I slotted this piece out so it's still a half inch thick which is plenty strong enough. And I have the slot for the relief areas. When I put the two pieces together, then it becomes a functional blast gate. Like so. So, and that's how it all works. Easy to clean out. It's real easy to make. Um, it's just made from plywood, hardboard, and some PVC pipe, and hot glue. So, it doesn't take long to make it. I think I probably, after I figured out how I wanted to make it to work and get the sides sizes proportional, uh, you can make one, I can make one of these in a half hour now if I want to. So, if you have any questions about how it's designed or how it's made and how the clean out works um, or suggestions, just leave them in the comments below. You can scale this up to be a four inch gate if you want to and you can still do the clean out thing on it so that you can clean it out even on larger blast gates. So this whole idea of the clean out will work on any blast gate when you design it this way. So um, for what it's worth, I think it works real well. So this is my OTB blast gate. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please say so. And I do want to thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Most importantly, though, please come back again because we're nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you again very soon.